Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Elle here. So today's video is going to be, um, it's just the eye makeup. I didn't do a tutorial on the rest of the makeup. It's just focusing on the eyes and it's sort of like a blending 101. So whether you wear a lot of makeup, whether you're just starting out wearing makeup, whether you're young, old, whatever your age is, does not matter. This is just a bit of a blending 101, whoop, blending 101 just to show you how to create like just a really basic smoky eye because i know that myself and a lot of other beauty youtubers in their videos will be saying oh i'm just going to blend this out i'm going to do this in winter life emotions and blending in circular motions i'm going to pack this on blah 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 and i realized that if you are just starting out with makeup or even if you've always worn makeup but you've not really done much of your eye makeup before you might not know what we mean when we're using all these different terminology so that's what I made this video for, just to go through that, go a bit more in depth into brushes, what kind of brushes I'd be using for each step, that kind of thing. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. By the way, how cute, I've just done the bubble pigtails, is that what you call them? For the first time, this is the first time I've done them, but they're like super, super cute. I absolutely love them. What do you think? I am obsessed. If you've not tried this hairstyle out yet, try it because... I don't know, it just looks super cute. But yeah, that's um, I'm gonna stop blabbing. If you wanna see how I created this eye look and if you want more tips on how to blend out your eyeshadows and about brushes, etc., etc., keep on watching. Um, but that is all I have to say today, guys. So thank you so much for watching if you do make it to the end. If you do like the video, please give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the video. I have already done my eyebrows off of camera just because obviously I want to focus mainly on the eyes and the blending so that, that is what this video is about. Before I actually jump into applying any makeup, like I said I've already done my brows but I've not got anything else on my eyes or not even my base yet because I want to start talking about brushes first. So these are the brushes that I'll be using for the look today. So I'll just talk you through them. So these brushes are for the base. So this is not really necessarily for my eyeshadow, it's just for the base. You don't need two brushes for your base. You could just use one, I'm just extra. But basically, um, and I'll talk about the base, obviously after I've talked about the brushes, but just to actually apply your base, you want to get something that's like this. This is a Peaches and Cream PC52 brush. And as you can see, it's quite thin and precise so that you can get right underneath the brow and get that sharp line because with your base you're not just applying it to the eye for your eyeshadow to stick to but you're also using it to carve out the brow and make the brow look a lot neater as well um, so that is why you want to go with something that's quite thin and precise the actual size of the brush I would probably say something bigger is better you don't want to be getting something tiny where you're going to be trying to get like it's going if you've got a tiny brush could not word what I meant then. If you have a really tiny brush, it's going to take you ages to apply the base to your eye. And ain't nobody got time for that. So I prefer something that's got like a bit of a larger surface area, but it's still thin and precise. The reason I have a second brush is just because I'm lazy. Basically, you could just use this just for your eye, eye base and just pat, 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 pat until the eye base is blended. I get really lazy. So I like to just whack the base on with this and just pat it all in and whack it on. And then I like to use something like this. This is a, I think it's a B01 brush. It's worn off slightly, but I think it's a B01 brush from Spectrum. Could use any sort of buffing brush. Again, this is a bit chunkier. You can see it's obviously not precise or anything like that. And I use this just to then buff the base into the skin on the eye especially around the edges so right here and here as well that way you've not got the harsh lines and it's all sort of smooth and blended onto the eye rather than it being patchy or some areas having more product than others etc etc so I like to use this you could use your finger for doing that you could use a brush uh, like a sorry your foundation brush you could use a sponge it doesn't really matter I just like to use this brush because I just do basically so that, they're the brushes that I would use for the eye base, but I'll show you how I do that and I'll speak about the eye base in a little while. But these are the brushes for the eyeshadow. So this seems extra. I know you don't need this many. I'll just talk you through what I use each one for. So I'll talk about these in a bit because these are thought sort of the more staple brushes you're going to need for the eye look. The reason I have these two brushes is for the lid and for the lash line. 
So for the lid, you want something, again, that's more precise, a bit more of a flat brush like this. And I like this because it packs on the colour. So when you're doing your lid shade, you want to be packing the colour on there. And that is what I use that brush for. So if I'm ever referring to packing a colour on, or patting it on, packing or patting, whichever I'm referring to, whatever kind of brush I'm using, and it's mainly this and another brush I'll speak about in a minute, it's where I'm literally just tap, tap, tap. I'm not swiping, I'm not doing any of this kind of motion, I'm just patting it on to the skin like so. And that is what I like this kind of brush for. It's nice and dense and it packs that colour on nicely. So that is what I'm referring to when I use that terminology. That is the motion I will be doing. So that is what I use that brush for, whether it's a matte, a shimmer, a glitter, whatever it is, that is the motion that I use. And I would say I'm packing it on or I'm patting it on. The other brush is obviously a lot smaller. It's a similar, similar shape. It's just a lot, lot smaller. This is what it looks like. Sorry, I never told you the name of the other brush. So the, this one that I was on about for the lid shade is a 234 brush from Zoeva. Obviously any brush, any brush will do just these kind of shape, this kind of shape. You don't have to use the exact same brushes that I use. Just see what you've got in your collection and make it work. Obviously, if you want to buy new brushes, buy new brushes. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, so the next brush, this is a Zoeva 237. So like I said, it's a similar shape. It's just a lot smaller. And what I use this for is you can use it for an inner corner highlight, which is nice. But the main thing I use it for is for the lash line. So top and bottom because it's nice and thin. So when I'm doing the bottom, I tend to use the tip of it, if you can see, and I would just run it along the lower lash line like so, just to blend any eyeshadow under there. And I'd also do that on the top as well. I tend to use sort of the edge of it a little bit, so more like this part of it, when I'm doing the liner on top, and you just would run this along the lash line like so. So the motion, if you cannot, if you just in case you can't see, this is the motion I'm doing. I'm sort of back and forth, sort of in a straight-ish line, obviously not completely straight, but just in a line back and forth. And that will blend the eyeshadow to the lash line and keep it nice and precise in that area. So the other three brushes are the main brushes for creating like that smoky eye. And these are the three brushes so obviously again you can use any brand it doesn't really matter these are just the ones i use so this is the one i would start off with ignore the fact that it's like stained blue and pink it is actually clean it's just stained and this is a zoeva 230 brush it's a pencil brush that's what these brushes are usually called because so it's nice and small and petite so it's good for packing on color again so i like to start off with my darkest eyeshadow and blend from there so what i would do with this is i would start by patting or packing the colour into the crease like so and just do this sort of motion back and forth right not swiping like this i'm going to be patting it on so putting the brush down taking it up and so on that is patting it on or packing the eyeshadow on and that's going to make sure you get an intense colour once i've done that i will then start to blend it slightly the reason i don't do this to start off with with this kind of brush and with it's such a dark shade is because i don't want it to go all over the place even though it's a precise brush i just think it is a lot easier to get the color on there by patting it on and blend afterwards now the type of blending is going to depend on the eye look that you are doing so if i'm kind of doing this sort of motion this is what i call windshield wiper motions by doing this so you're sort of going like that like windshield wipers that is basically what you're doing back and forth back and forth back and forth and that is going to help you keep it more precise and tight so you're not going to be going all out you're going to be keeping it nice and precise by doing windshield wipe motions and that is what i would do with a brush like this because this is what we're going to be using the darkest color on so after i've done that i'll then go with a brush that is just to show you the comparison it's slightly bigger the bristles are slightly longer but it's still nice and petite and then you would do with the next shade which is going to be the more mid-tone shade a similar kind of thing to blend the darkest shade out but you're going to take it slightly higher and again doing windshield wipe motions because that's going to keep it nice and precise to the eye right where you're blending rather than going everywhere so you're going to keep it nice and precise by doing windshield wipe motions like so when you are blending i'll show you on the back of my hand 
you want to be doing it very light handed so you don't want to be if your brush is doing this if you're doing this and that's what the bristles look like you're too heavy handed um, what you want to be doing is this so it literally just tickling the skin with the with the bristles that is all you want to be doing um, I will also say as well, you will have a lot more control if you hold the brush further down the handle. If you hold it here, it's difficult to get control and you're also going to be, naturally by holding it here, you'll be a lot more heavy handed. If you hold it here, it'll be easier to be more light handed with the brush. And the last crease brush is something bigger. So just show you in comparison again, this is a lot bigger and a lot fluffier. It's not as dense. And this is what we're going to use the lightest shade on to really blend out. Again, I usually like to do windshield wiper motions when I'm first putting the colour on. But as you want to then blend out, you can start using circular motions, which would be doing this. So this is circular motions. So like I said, windshield wiper versus circular motions. If you're doing circular motions like this, you're going to have a much more blown out effect. It's not going to be as precise to where you're first applying it. It's going to be a lot more blown out which is why i wouldn't be doing circular motions until i'm using the lightest color so hopefully that made sense but i think it'll be a lot easier when i'm actually showing you what i am doing on my eyes using products so let's get started so obviously for a base you must be using a base whether this is a specific base primer eyeshadow primer concealer whatever it is obviously certain things work better for certain people I tend to not like to use concealers as a base just because it makes my eye water. Might not happen for everyone, personal preference. If you've not got an eye base, just give it a go with a concealer. If it's not working for you, maybe invest in an eye base. There's so many different ones out there. Um, so many different types and formulas. I personally prefer the P. Louise base. This is what it looks like. I'll just pop some on the back of my hand so you can see. And the reason I like this is because obviously it's very pigmented, so it just gives the eye area like a nice even base to work on if you can see on my lids my eyelids are quite veiny so using a base like this as you can see it's just going to give one wash of color all over the eyes and um, your base also helps the eyeshadows to stick to it so your eyes will have something to sort of cling on to and it's going to make them a lot more pigmented as well because of that everyone's different but i personally don't like to set my eye base some people do set their eye base with a, a with a powder. I personally don't because the tackier it is, the easier the eyeshadow will stick to it. So this is what it looks like. You can get it in different shades. I just use the shade number two. And I'm going to pick it up on my Peaches and Cream PC52 brush. Like so. And first off, I'm going to start by carving out my brow. So going right underneath the brow. And just carving that out and this just helps make the brow look a lot cleaner and a lot sharper i've not really used anything in my brows other than a clear like gel but obviously if you were to use pencil or powder or a pomade in your brows it just helps clean up any mistakes as well which is really good as you can see that looks a lot cleaner than this side so now that i've carved out the brow using the same brush and the same product i'm now going to start putting this all over the eye area for the eyeshadow to stick to and i just start by patting this on as you can see making sure to get on the inner corner sort of the side of the nose as well and taking it out past the brow um just because obviously when you are blending your eyeshadow you don't want it to suddenly go from having primer here and then nothing here when you're trying to blend it out because it won't look as smooth um, on the edges so that's why i just take it out onto the side of my nose and also past the brow as well as you can currently see it's not necessarily even on my eyes you can probably see that it's a little bit patchy you can get it to be nice and even and smooth using just this brush alone but i find that it just takes a bit longer which is why i like to switch to the more buffing brush just pick up any extra product on the, from the back of my hand and just using the exact same motion but because it's a lot more dense um it's easier to blend it out and make it nice and smooth so it's not patchy like i said you can do the same, exact same thing with the first brush i just think it just takes longer which is why i like to just switch to this brush for this step because i'm a bit lazy so i like to just find things that make things quicker for me personally there we go 
that's the base done. Um, this is also why I like to do my eyes before my skin because obviously I take the base up here. Um, also for when you are doing eyeshadow is obviously if you've got so every, every eyeshadow is obviously different, but a lot of eyeshadows will have some fall down, which is where obviously as you're applying it, you'll notice like little speckles of eyeshadow dropping underneath your eye, which is why I do my eyes first, because it just means that I can wipe that away with a makeup wipe and then apply my foundation and my concealer and it's not going to look muddy. If I've got like my skin done and then I get it falling down, it just doesn't look very nice. And then if you try and wipe that away and then try and touch up your concealer, I just feel like it starts to look a bit patchy. So I'm not really a fan. That's why I do my eyes first, but it's everyone's personal preference, whatever works for you. So for eyeshadows today, you can use any eyeshadows to follow along with at home. You can use any colour you want and just kind of follow the same principle of like the dark, the mid-tone and the light kind of thing, just so you get the same sort of effect. But whether you do that with neutrals, with colours, it really doesn't matter. It's just the base, the basics, basically. The basics, basically. Just, you know what I mean? You're just getting like the idea of the dark, the mid-tone and the light shade to blend them out. But like I said, whether you're using neutral colours or colours, actual colours, that really doesn't matter. I'm just going to be using the Melt Rust Stack. Um, so these are just like, they're all magnetic and this is what they look like on the inside. So I'm going to start off with this shade right here. This is the darkest shade I'll be using in my crease. It's not the darkest shade I'll be using overall because obviously for the liner I'll be using something darker. This is the darkest shade I'll use in the crease and this is in the shade Rust. So we're going to start off with the pencil brush which is the 230 brush from um, Zoeva and I'm going to tap this into the powder if you can see. I'm not going to swipe around because this eyeshadow is really pigmented and as you can see there's already some sort of kickback which means there will be fall down with this palette with this um, eyeshadow, sorry, so I'm just tapping the brush in there. Because like I said, if you, you be, you'll you be using the tip of the brush. If you are scrunching the, scrushing, squishing the bristles into it, you're just pushing the product further into the bristles and it's gonna be harder to blend. And another thing, do not blow on the brush. People blow on the brush to get excess powder off. And number one, it's really un unhygienic. And number two, all it does is blow the product further into the bristles. So it's gonna, again, be harder to blend you've got excess on your brush just tap it off literally just tap it off so we're going to start by applying this to the crease so like I said I like to use just like a tapping motion or patting packing it into the crease do a little bit at a time you don't want to get loads on your brush all at once so just do a little bit then go back for more product a little bit more and go back for more product and so on so as you can see I am just tapping this into the crease And obviously everyone's got a different eye shape, so you might have a smaller lid space or a larger lid space. That is completely fine. Some people like fake the crease, so like I'm making my crease look higher than it actually is. And all I'm doing to do that is just putting the darkest shadow higher up than my actual crease. But if you're not comfortable doing that, just put it right into the actual crease of the eye. As you can see at the minute, I am just packing this colour on there just so we've got it nice and intense. And then as there's less product on my brush now, I'm not going to pick up any more, but I am going to start blending this further into the inner corner of the eye. You're going to want the outer corner to look darker than the inner corner. So I've not really got any extra product on my brush now. I am just sort of blending back and forth in those windshield wiper motions now. Like so. And I know it looks a little bit crazy at the moment, but don't worry, it will all come together. So the next shade I'm going to be using is this one right here, which is the shade Rubbish. I'm going to be using the Morphe M507. I don't think I ever told you the number, what brush this was. Um, this is a Morphe M507 brush, which looks like this. Same principle applies, just dab the brush, the tip of the brush, into the eyeshadow. If you've got an eyeshadow that's not very pigmented, you can just swirl the tip around, but these are super pigmented, which is why I'm only tapping it in. And we're going to be blending that dark shade out now. So you don't want to be taking it directly over what we've just done because it's going to look muddy. You want to overlap it. So you want to take it a little bit higher, but overlap to blend. So I'm going to start right here and just start to blend this out. 
Again, I'm using windshield wiper motions. You're better off just getting a little bit, blending, getting a bit more blending, rather than getting loads of product on the brush all at once. So if you've got way too much product on there, you're gonna find it difficult to blend it out. So now that we've blended the second shade out, we're going to go on to the last crease shade. This is, um, this is the shade Antique. It's obviously a lighter, it looks quite peachy. Again, you can use any colours you want, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to be using the bigger fluffy brush, which is a Morphe M573 brush, which looks like this. Again, at this point, because it's a lighter shade, I will sort of swirl it around. But with the darker shade, I just prefer to tap the bristles in. Make sure you tap off any excess as well. And we're just going to blend over that. Obviously, don't be scared to take it up to the brow, but it's personal preference how high up you want to take the eyeshadow. Again, just blending back and forth in windshield wiper motions. Just because I'm saying windshield wiper motions doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go the full length of the eye in one like sweep. You can just sort of do this section and then this section and then this section. That's what I like to do personally. And then now I'm going to start doing circular motions to make sure the edges are all nice and blended. So when I first pick the colour up, I'm doing windshield wiper motions. And then as I've got less product on the brush, I'm doing bigger circular motions to blend it out. Now I think where a lot of people go wrong is they've got those three shades on there and they just leave it at that. They're like, oh, well, that's all my crease done. It's not you do need to go back and re-intensify those shades. So going back in with the smaller brush and the darkest shade that we used, picking some more of that up, and then I'm gonna to start to take this back into the crease just to re-intensify it. And you can see that difference already. Whereas before it just sort of like lost its intensity. It's just bringing that back now. So you still want to be able to see the colors, like each individual color, but blended together in like a nice gradient. Um, Whereas sometimes if you blend too much or if you don't go back and re-intensify each shade, it can just sort of look like it's all blended into one colour. So I've done that and then I'm going to go in with the second shade, which is this one right here, and the second brush that we used. And do the exact same thing again where we placed it before. I like to see it as like layering the eyeshadow up. So like in Shrek, when he says that ogres, what does it say? Ogres are like onions that like they have layers. It's the same thing with eyeshadow. You've just got to layer it up just to make sure you've got the intensity that you want. So I know a lot of people always say like, oh, I can't get it like dark and smoky. And it's just because they're not going back in with the shades afterwards to re-intensify them. Honestly, it makes a huge difference. I'm just going back in with that light shade now. And just do this as many times as you want. You might find that some some don't need it and some do it just completely depends so just keep doing that back and forth with the three shades you've been using until you're happy with the intensity and the blend i just went ahead and did the other eye off of camera and then i'll now show you the final steps on this eye so now i've got the crease shades done we're going to go in with the lid shade i'm not going to be doing a cut crease um just because obviously i want this to be like more of the basics i don't want to start complicating things with cut creases plus you don't need to do a cut crease um, for just normal makeup, cut creases look amazing on photo for Instagram, don't get me wrong, but in person, I actually just prefer like more of a blended crease and then the lid shade. I, I'm not too fussed for the cut crease for like day to day normal makeup or if you're going out, that kind of thing. So we're not doing a cut crease, but you can if you want to, by all means. Um, so we're going to do the lid shade. I'm going to be using the shade Classic, which is this one right here. And this is where we're going in with the Zoeva 234 brush, which looks like this. So I'm just going to pick the colour up on the brush like so. Tap off any excess, as you can see. I don't know if it's picking up on camera how much came off there. And then just pat this onto the eyelid like so. Make sure you take it onto the inner corner as well. I'm now going to take the second brush we used, so that sort of what the one we used the mid tone shade on. I'm going to pick a little bit of that up, not too much. I'm going to just start to bring it in slightly on the outer corner, just to blend the lighter shade into 
the outer portion of the crease if that makes sense just so you've not got like a harsh line and I'm also going to do the exact same with the darker shade we used on the pencil brush not too much of it just start just start to sort of flick it in slightly going back to the more mid-tone shade And then finally with the lighter crease shade that we used. And it'll just give a much more nice gradient effect rather than having like a sort of like harsh line. I don't know what that sound effect was there. But you know, like instead of having that like a harsh line between the sh two shades, just having more of a gradient effect, it'll look a lot nicer. The lash line, so we're going in with this smaller brush and I'm gonna go with a much darker shade. I'm gonna go in with the shade Rot. It's just a really dark brown. It's almost black, but not quite. And I'm just going to be running this along the lash line. Make sure you are connecting it to the outer corner as well. Like so, just run that across. Just like so. And then I'm going to go in with the darkest shade that we use for the crease. So it's obviously not the darkest shade we've used altogether, but the one that we use, the darkest one in the crease with the same brush. And I'm going to just run this along, not completely over it, but on sort of the top. So we're just sort of overlapping. It'll just give like a nice blended, smoky liner effect rather than like a one harsh line of colour. So the eyes are almost done. I've obviously got to do like the lower lash line now. Um, and you need me how to talk obviously you need to make sure you've got a base we put a base at the top we need to put a base down below of course so i'm just going to use the same base as before which was the p louise base and then i'm going to just use this brush again just to blend it out before i do any eyeshadow on the lower lash line i'm going to do some eyeliner i'm going to do this in my waterline and my tight line as you can see i've got it in this one just not in this one yet it doesn't make a massive difference putting it in your tight line which is up above that just makes your eyelashes look a lot thicker um, and fuller i mean i'm going to be putting false lashes on anyway but if you're just using mascara just doing some dark eyeliner in your tight line is going to make your lashes look a lot fuller and thicker so that's always a good tip and um obviously also put it on the lower the lower waterline as well it's just going to make your eyes look more intense, more smoky. You don't have to do it. You can use a black, you could use a brown, you could use a nude or a white if you want to make your eyes look full, uh, like more open, should I say. But I'm going to be using a black and this is the Feline Eye Pencil from MAC. Ignore the faces that I'm going to be pulling when I'm doing this. But to do the tight line, I just sort of look down and then just run that along the tight line. Be careful that you don't poke yourself in the eye. You're best off looking away from the pencil. So as I'm doing this side, I'm looking, obviously I'm looking down, but I'm like looking that way. As I'm doing this side, I'm looking that way. So if you're looking away from the pencil, like you can't see it and you're not going to be worried about poking yourself in the eye. And then just same for the waterline, just run that along the waterline. Doing the waterline, if you start from underneath, again, if you do with this, you're going to see the pencil. Sorry, if you go from like up above, you're going to see the pencil and you're going to be scared of poking yourself in the eye. So go from below. That way you can't actually see the tip of the pencil and you'll be fine. I'm just going to go in with the same brush for, that we used for the lash line and that darkest shade that we used. And I'm going to run this along the lash line over the black and then using the pencil brush and the brown shade not the darkest but the the one that we used in the crease and run that under the lower lash line as well basically oh, like an elevator what goes up must come down so basically we're doing the exact same things on the lower lash line as well so this is the um second shade we used in the crease i didn't know what to call it then and finally, the lightest shade we used in the crease. And as you're doing this on the lower lash line again, make sure you're connecting it to the outer corner of the eye on the top. 
otherwise you're just gonna have a, a gap and it's gonna look weird so there we go that's the eyes pretty much done i'm gonna go and pop on some mascara some lashes do my skin and come back to show you the finished result obviously it's up to you if you want to put on lashes or if you just want to do some mascara completely your choice it's personal preference um but yeah i'm gonna go finish off the rest of my makeup and then i'll come back to show you the finished result okay guys so this is the final look i've obviously just finished the rest of my makeup off off of camera i couldn't say that then yeah i'll finish the rest of my makeup off off of camera and this is the final look i'm absolutely loving it it just feels super glam but it's like a super quick look to do obviously i was going through it step by step and really talking through it but when you have practiced it and you know what you're doing it's just super super quick um just so you know as well the lashes that i'm wearing are the style jasmine from doll beauty which i think are my absolute favorite kind of lashes for that like glam sort of look you know and this highlight loving it but yeah this is the final look I absolutely love it it's just so easy to do so let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoy these kinds of videos where I'm really going step by step talking you through how to do things and the techniques to use or if you just prefer like more chatty like oh I'm using this shade blah 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 you get what I'm saying but yeah it's just super super useful especially with June the 21st coming up because all my guys and gals in the UK will know that Fingers crossed if everything goes to plan, that is when we can come out of lockdown and everything will be, fingers crossed, back to normal. So make sure you get practicing your blending for when that happens, for all your nights out and your day drinking and anything else that you're going to be doing. You've got time to be practicing. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you did and if you like the look, because I love the look. This might be my June 21st go-to makeup, if I'm completely honest. I absolutely love it. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the little subscription box down below. Um, I post videos every single Sunday. So yeah, that's all I got to say today, guys. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.